kind of, you know, join us from the first two sessions in the first track um, that we just facilitated, well, pre-recorded, but, you know, facilitated in the chat. Uh, you know, today in this session, we'll be covering basically some core responsibilities of the corresponding secretary position and go a little more in depth as to, um, you know, some tips and suggestions just to make your, your job a lot easier. Um, you know, and maybe offer a new perspective on how to do your job. Um, so, brothers, as we uh, as we get started, we'll just kind of go over some um, some basic guidelines, uh, you know, for the presentation today. Similar to the first uh, the first track that we had, brothers, keep utilizing that chat. Um, you know, I know, I know you all were very active in, in that first one. So I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you all, you know, being that active and, and also facilitating some conversation on your own. Uh, you know, there were a lot of good thoughts, a lot of good questions in there. Let's keep that up. Um, you know, Eli and I are going to be monitoring the chat as we're presenting, uh, you know, so if you all have any questions, um, if you all have any questions that, that you want us to answer directly, just throw them in the chat. Um, you know, I think we'll just address the elephant in the room. We have no idea what happened <laughs> in the last session. So brothers, uh, I do apologize uh, for, for that, um, you know, but we got everything figured out. The, the recording will be available for you. Not sure of the exact date, so I don't want to say something that you hold against us, uh, you know, or hold us to, uh, but it will be available for you guys. Um, you know, if you're utilizing the chat today, brothers, you know, be open and honest. Uh, that's, that's all we can really ask for. Uh, you know, we wish that this was in person and, you know, that we could share some thoughts in, in more of a secure space, uh, you know, so you all could, could really have a conversation, you know, but this is the best we got. So feel free to keep utilizing that chat box. Like I said, we're going to be monitoring it. Uh, we're going to try to make this fun and entertaining and engaging for you all. So we have a few polls created um, and those polls can be found in the polls tab of the um, of the platform that we're utilizing. So, you know, once we get to those, we'll kind of prompt you guys to answer the questions and then we'll go from there. Um, so brothers, let's, let's just jump to quick introductions. Eli, you want to kick us off? Yeah, for sure. Hold on one second, I'm trying to go in between here. Awesome. And Dio, man, my, my audio was cutting in and out there just a little bit. All I heard was Eli, take it away. Here we go. Perfect. 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 Uh, so again, guys, this is us again. Just a simple little slide. Uh, you know, myself and Dio have been with you all day. We're looking forward to getting to know you all a little bit better through the chat, everything like that. Um, but okay, here we go. Gunner, we, we see your chat pop up on Zoom, man, but nobody else can see that. You got to use the chat that is on uh, online on the website because Dio and I are the only ones that are getting those chats on Zoom. So just keep that in mind. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this is us again for any of you that you forgot. Uh, so Dio graduated from Appalachian State. I graduated from University of Alabama at Birmingham. We're here leading it in and uh, yeah, sorry. Perfect. And Dio, you already told them about the polls, correct? Correct. Perfect. So, guys, if you go to the poll section, uh, do we want to go ahead and kick it off with the first one, Dio? Let's do it. All right. So the first one is what is graduate relations and engagement, guys? Um, we're just wanting to know, you know, you know, what is it to you? Does your chapter have a graduate relations chairman? Um, you know, is there uh, really, you know, something that you kind of define this as? Who falls into it? What does it look like now virtually? Um, you know, if we just go back to that first, first question, uh, what is graduate relations? Uh, the ultimate purpose really is to build relationships with the men that have set the foundation before you. Uh, so whether you're, uh, I know a couple of guys in here are throwing their hundredth pig dinner this year, right? Chase at Oregon state and a couple of other guys have done it in the past year or so. And some are looking forward to next year, hopefully being able to do it in person. Um, you know, this is really making sure that we keep in touch with those brothers, uh, so that they can kind of see that this brotherhood is still alive. Uh, and again, who falls under graduate relations? Uh, this is really anyone with a degree. So it could be, again, those, those graduate brothers that have come from your chapter, graduate brothers from other chapters. But don't forget about parents of brothers. 
the administration that's on your campus. Any of these people can help you uh, in trying to build your chapter to be a better version of itself, right? Uh, try to make sure that you're connected with resources that are on your campus uh, and resources that are in other towns around the country as we, you know, we all see the diversity in our chapters, guys coming from different regions for trying to look for somewhere to throw somewhat, some kind of a brotherhood retreat. If we've engaged well with parents, hey, they may have some kind of a property that we could utilize and throw that kind of an event and be successful in cutting some costs. And the third one, what does it look like now virtually? Um, you know, it's, I think you guys have all been really active in the chat today and Dio and I really appreciate that. You know, you've been able to really spread some ideas about different things that, go, that are going on. I know I shouted out specifically Alberta, University of Alberta chapter uh, through their pig dinner virtually uh, for their, uh, gosh, I want to say it was their 50th, their 50th pig dinner. Um, so, you know, Nick, correct me in the chat if, uh, if, if we had, if, if I'm getting that wrong there. Um, but, um, but yeah, so there, we're going to be talking about all kinds of things like that today. Um, but one thing, and Dio mentioned this, I think in the last presentation when he talked about, uh, Bill Brace, well, uh, think of graduate relations as a recruitment tool for graduate brothers and really anyone with a degree. You never know how somebody else can help out and help the chapter. Absolutely. And Nila, we do have some questions in the chat. So I just want to provide a clarification, okay. brothers. Okay. Uh, the, the first question I want to address is, is, is a grad relations chairman supposed to be separate from corresponding secretary? Um, the way I view it, and I think Eli will agree with, with the uh, philosophy here, is yes. And the main reason is, you know, brothers, being on cabinet, you serve more of kind of a coaching model, right? You know, you're like the puppeteer, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, and you're watching all these moving parts play their role as they serve into the, the greater operations of the chapter. Graduate relations would be one of those roles. Um, at the end of the day, brothers, I, I know when I was a field secretary, I would always say this to, to the chairman I met with. Um, it gets more brothers involved at the end of the day, right? You know, if you can create a graduate relations committee, suddenly you have four or five of those general member brothers that now have a role in the chapter. Um, if to, to get us started up, Chase, ultimately try to gauge interest from, from brothers. Um, you know, if there's a brother that you see that's always harping on grad brothers or wanting to get to know guys or you see them interact most with them, that might be a good candidate. Um, you know, a lot of times, and, and Eli, I'm not sure if this demographic has changed now that, that you're traveling. Um, a lot of times there was an older brother in the chat who's, who's closer to graduation, you know, because they have kind of that connection to the graduate base. Um, you know, but ultimately, brothers, at the end of the day, it is up to each chapter whether they want to host, uh, you know, and, and have different graduate relations chairman um, or delegate the role. It depends on the size of the chapter. If you have the capabilities, why not? Um, you know, so, brothers, as we move forward, Eli touched on kind of the virtual capabilities of, of grad engagement, what that looks like. Um, and b before I do get to that, Reese, you bring up a good point. Um, Having a committee could be an overkill in some cases, but you've got to remember that the grad relations chairman is the one leading that committee, right? So the committee is there to provide advice and suggestions. However, at the end of the day, it's ultimately his creation, if that makes sense, with your oversight and your approval. Um, you know, but again, David, you bring up a good point as well. So brothers, I as we go forward, you know, we'll keep touching on the importance of, of a grad relations chairman, but it is, you know, chapter to chapter based. Suppose as we look at virtual grad engagement, what opportunity has it brought about? I, uh, you know, I know from my own chapter, I, I'm a harp on them for a second. They've done an incredible job, uh, you know, with virtual grad engagement. Uh, you know, so, so Charlie, I know you're, you're in this chat now. Well done. Um, it's an opportunity to engage lost graduate brothers. You know, brothers that may not have been attended a pig dinner in, in you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, you know, brothers that might have missing information. This is the opportunity to get them re-engaged and it's minimal effort. And in most cases, brothers, no money. I <laughs> really, you know, you don't really need a budget to, to host virtual events. Um, you know, it's a way to bring brothers together in a very different way. You know, and, and I think this is a good point. Uh, Good spot, you know, I know in the, in the last track, it was mentioned about the centennial celebrations. Brothers, I think that's a, that's a huge event, right? Uh, you know, and it's, of course, it's gonna be difficult 
to try to host an event like that virtually. But at the end of the day, I would suggest you all to host something virtually to keep that brotherhood and that engagement there, um, you know, in hopes that there can be an in-person event, you know, come fall. You know, but at the end of the day, it provides an opportunity for that engagement, you know, with, with again, minimal effort. Um, Gunnar, you bring up a good point. Giving Day was a perfect example of virtual grad engagement, right? There was a virtual pig dinner hosted. Uh, you know, as I mean, all the events on Giving Day were virtual, and then they can be found on the fraternity's YouTube channel. So if you all want, um, if you all want an example of it, just go to the fraternity's YouTube channel, and you'll be able to find it. Who to engage? Well, brothers, uh, it depends on on the communication, right? You know, so graduate brothers are going to be the target demographic. But of course, you can still engage parents with newsletters. You can still engage university administration and, and faculty. Um, you know, it's just a matter of how you choose to communicate with these different parties. How to engage? Well, brothers, uh, a lot of different ways. Zoom has created a new opportunity, you know, for all of us. And I think a lot of the ways that we think about grad relations as we move forward will look very different as, as we continue to operate. Um, you know, but Zoom, of course, creates that opportunity. I know my chapter itself has hosted monthly graduate brother meetings, brotherhood events of sorts, um, you know, and they do it every, I believe it's the first Tuesday of every month, you know, and, and sure, attendance may not be incredible, but at the end of the day, bro, you see, you see guys come back that might not have been involved in quite some time, you know, so it creates that opportunity. You can have virtual game nights, pledge class reunions, interactive classes of sorts. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. It's just a matter of looking and seeking out what's available and how you can make it happen. Suppose for virtual and internal databases, if you all don't have one for your own chapter, I highly suggest that, that you create one. You know, this not only helps you keep, uh, keep your graduates kind of in a more organized fashion, you know, and, and you can maintain updated contact information and kind of a running list. But also, if you request a list from headquarters, you can cross reference the list, add in missing information, email me for that list. I can pull it for you. I can also pull you a list of brothers within the geographic area of your of your school, uh, you know, so so that you all can try to engage graduates outside of um, outside of your own chapter. You know, so COVID with as much negative as it's brought about, brothers, it's brought about a lot of opportunity, right? You know, so I want you all, if, if you haven't already done so, start looking at it in a different lens. Um, grads are the lifeline of the fraternity, you know, if, if we're being honest. Uh, so, you know, in a matter of time, brothers, you're gonna be there as well. Uh, you know, so it's important to start putting yourself in their shoes right off the bat. Absolutely. Sorry, I've got a lot of traffic going on outside. I don't want to be interrupted and deal with all that. Um, guys, the next part, we're just going to be talking about operating pig dinner efficiently. Um, you know, first off, I, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what a pig dinner is, right? Um, but it's, you, you know, I, I think a lot of guys in our fraternity don't understand that it's actually the longest standing tradition in the Greek world, starting all the way back in 1893. Um, so again, if we have any brothers from Berkeley here on the call today, Fantastic. Love to love to give that chapter a shout out. Um, but this is where a lot of those brothers already had uh, some kind of event where they would meet up, right? Uh, and where they would be able to like have this time to spend together as graduates, uh, where they're able to uh, you know reminisce on the the good days and everything like that, even if they weren't spending it in the same town now that they were all apart. Um, from that, they you know, would, there was, there was one year where Frank Norris couldn't come, right? So he wrote in a letter and that's what we all come to now to know as the exiles toast. Um, so again, this, this dinner is to celebrate the graduates. It's there to be able to recognize the efforts that they, uh, you know, they put into the chapter and be able to, again, bring them back to the table to where that they can have that same reminiscing that Frank Norris and his brothers did, right? So um, definitely something to, you know, if your chapter isn't already doing it or if your chapter is looking to do it better, um, 
like that's that's what we're kind of here to talk about today. So I guess, you know, I want to go ahead and cut to the polls again. It seems like some of y'all had already done all the questions. That's fantastic. Uh, if you were uh, an overachiever, went ahead and did all 12. But the second and third questions are having to having to do, or excuse me, the second question is having to do with this specifically. Uh, talking about if your chapter hosted a pig dinner in 2020. Um, have a several different options there. So let us know yes, no, or again, what is a pig dinner? Uh, if, if that description of what I kind of told you doesn't, uh, doesn't really give a, a good idea, right? Um, so I'm going to give everybody just a second to do that while I, I kind of, uh, you know, a, again, just leave, it, leave this up on the slide. Uh, shout out to the Colorado boys uh, pictured here. Uh, I know Dio had a big hand in rechartering them recently, um, but this is, I think, their first pig dinner back um, from rechartering um, in the on the slide here. So let's see. All right, a lot of guys didn't. Um, and that's, again, guys, I think COVID definitely threw a curveball for a lot of chapters, right? Uh, and that's that's totally okay. Hopefully what Dio and I are trying to do today is give you guys some ideas for hosting it virtually if COVID doesn't slow down uh, and we're not able to do anything in person here in the, in the spring um, or, you know, potentially have that backup plan where things do get better and we're able to move forward with our typical plans. Um, so, Again, that last bullet just talking about start thinking of how early planning should start. Uh, Dio and I kind of have uh, have a general idea of how we can uh, how we can go ahead and start this process early. It's not working for you, Dio. Here we go. Boom. Beautiful timeline. Uh, so again, guys, uh, this, this timeline goes all the way to, um, you know, all the way to eight to 12 months before the actual event happens. Uh, so things from, again, some of you had said that you oversee pig dinner. Uh, some are overseeing a pig dinner chairman where this brother's role, this brother's job is to oversee all aspects of that. While a corresponding secretary may oversee them, Corresponding secretary sits down at the table with the cabinet, right? The other officers, uh, and is kind of crafting the the strategy, crafting the ideas, crafting the plans. From there, they go down to the pig dinner chairman, give them those ideas, those plans, everything like that. And the chairman is there to do the specific jobs, all these tasks that we have on here, right? So I know that that was a kind of some clarification that we were needing to hit up in the chat, and you guys let me know if that doesn't make, still doesn't make sense. Uh, to where it's like that chain of communication where the chairman's often that guy that works with the committee to be the boots on the ground uh, and they report up to the corresponding secretary, corresponding secretary reports up to the cabinet as a whole. Um, but again, uh, selecting a date, uh, confirming a caterer, signing contracts, everything like that is really important. Um, you know, if you're looking at contracts, one thing to keep in mind is to get graduate brothers involved, uh, potentially even a lawyer, uh, because they understand what some of the verbiage in those long documents uh, can actually mean and make sure that the chapter isn't, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, screwed uh, in, uh, in some kind of a dealing with maybe a caterer or venue or something of the sort. Um, Another thing is, you know, working with Dio uh, and IHQ to request silver, gold, and diamond owls uh, from from international headquarters, and I think that actually leads me to um, we'll, we'll we'll talk about uh, those in a little bit. Um, but going into the six months out, uh, one of the big ones is talking about you know keynote speaker uh, for those that have been able to attend an in person pig dinner or even a virtual pig dinner. Um, one of the highlights is this keynote speaker, right? This could be a brother from the chapter, a brother from another chapter, potentially somebody from IHQ, maybe even an Archon, uh, to come and speak and really be able to give a message that brings the brothers together, maybe brags on the chapter a little bit, or he's able to tell a story from his own experience that ties back to the fraternal values. Um, but I, I kind of want to pose the third question, the third poll, if I could. Uh, who would be a good keynote speaker? So if you could go to the poll section on the website, that third question is there asking about who would be a good keynote speaker. So 
university or college administrator, a recent graduate, an older successful graduate, maybe a former athlete if they went on to the pros from your university or just are in the university, um, or if one that graduated from another uh, sorority or fraternity. All right, a lot of guys uh, at this point are picking the older and successful graduate. Um, but guys, there's, there's really no wrong answer here. Uh, it's not necessarily a trick question, but it just wants you guys to kind of broaden your scope, right? Um, nobody picked university or college administrator. Uh, well, hey, you know, those people have a lot to say too. And they, they, they have a better, uh, you know, a better scope on the culture of your university than maybe an outside, uh, an outside perspective. Um, so I don't want you to necessarily rule them out, but any of those five, I think could do a really great job. And I've seen do great jobs at pig dinners around the country. Um, so something to uh, something to keep in mind. And again, don't have to read this bullet for bullet, guys, and go go over every detail. But I think that again, this kind of shows you what this could kind of look like. And Dio, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Phil, you're about to say something. No, not not at all. I was going to say when when I was traveling, brothers, uh, I actually went to one of the chapters pig dinner, Sam Houston State. Their speaker was. Uh, I think it was the chief of, of campus police. It, it was someone very non-traditional that had nothing to do with the chapter. And I'm not gonna lie to you, that was the best keynote speech I've ever heard. Um, you know, so like Eli said, all those options can be great. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of really what kind of speech your, your chapter is looking for. If it's a big event, of course, try to shoot for the stars, you know, get the big name. Um, you know, but if it's, if it's a regular Pig Dinner Brothers, you know, think of, of what you want the message to be ultimately. Right. And again, guys, you know, this is just the first of the first part of the timeline. Uh, but hopefully what we could show you through this is that, you know, there are three main elements to a successful pig dinner. Uh, the first one is starting by planning early, right? Uh, organizing that team that's going to be able to surround you and, you know, the pig dinner chairman and making sure that this goes off without a hitch and prompt communication. And often that prompt communication starts early uh, so that these graduates understand, hey, this is the date that we're setting this for. Uh, go ahead and mark it on your calendars and update them again promptly if need be, if something changes. Absolutely. So, brothers, as we move into the, the pig dinner planning timeline, I did, I did prompt this in the chat, but there are resources available to you in the files tab. And they were taken directly from the phiagame.org website. And brothers, I created these resources um, to help ease the planning process for you. Uh, so all these bullet points are listed out in a specific resource. Um, you know, so, so I hope that, that you all are able to take these, um, you know, and at least share them with your chairman and, and coordinate with them, uh, you know, to help it, help make it an even more successful event. So brothers, as we look at the four month out mark, invitations, um, invitations are big. You know, and it's important to, to understand to not only rely on email. Email is great to get communication out there, but a lot of brothers like the hard copy mail. Uh, you know, I know I have a chapter brother himself who he's collected and kept every single pig dinner invitation that, that he's had since being a graduate. And this year when, when he didn't get one, uh, he was pretty upset. <laughs> not not going to lie to you. Uh, you know, so it, it's fine to do the email route, you know, but it might be worth the investment. Uh, you know, to, to throw some money towards hard copy invitations. Uh, if you all are planning to, to have hotel rooms available to your brothers, you can reserve a hotel room block. Um, you know, be sure to communicate that information uh, to the graduate brothers who, and, and undergrad brothers who may be uh, renting some of those rooms. Review and plan around alcohol policies. Brothers, this, this not only pertains to the risk management policy that we have at Phi Gamma Delta, this also includes your college or university's policies. Um, you know, so be sure to familiarize yourself with those and, and know how they apply, um, you know, to the event itself. So as you go into the three month mark, brothers, and start, start getting some RSVPs for the pig dinner. You know, it'll only help you all get a better head count uh, for the events, uh, you know, so that'll ultimately help with, uh, with plating and, and food reservations and, and bookings. Uh, you know, but also will give you a better idea of how many attendees to expect. If, if your venue isn't going to hold the anticipated number of attendees, those you might have to look for another venue, right? Uh, you know, so it's important to get those RSVPs as early as possible. Uh, if you all need any sires and sons certificates, uh, if, if your chapter has any relationships like that, feel free to send me an email. 
uh, you know, I'll be happy to, to connect you with, with the lady at headquarters who, who can get those printed for you. Um, the two month mark brothers, well, we're looking at the actual pig part of pig dinner. Uh, so, you know, start, start looking for an actual pig. Um, you know, I know there's been a number of chapters who haven't been able to find one and have used stuffed animals. That's perfectly fine. Um, you know, you've got to adapt when, when the resources aren't there. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the chapter was able to, to adapt. Um, for the, the owl recognition, and brothers, we'll, we'll touch on owls a little later after the planning timeline. Uh, there are corresponding pins that go along with them that aren't sold by us. Uh, so if you want the link to, to those pins that go along with the certificates, shoot me an email. I'm, I'm happy to coordinate that to you and send them to you. Um, set your ticket price. Uh, you know, Eli, I'm pretty sure we have a, a next poll uh, is about ticket pricing. So brothers, if you all haven't um, filled that one out, please take the time to, to fill out the poll about, uh, about pricing and, and Eli will fill us in on the results. So what is an appropriate price to charge for pig dinner? I got a few different options on there. Some brackets, some would say. Uh, there are those, there's, there's an option there for, hey, it's uh, free 99, come on down. Maybe it's anything up to $25. We've got different options all the way to 75 and up. Um, so we'll go ahead and give it another few seconds here. Okay, yeah, so about half. Uh, half of the, the room here uh, is in that $25 to $50 range. Um, second is $50 to $75. Third is zero to $25. And the, with 3%, whopping 3%, $75 and up. Now, brothers, it's important to understand, um, you know, and Eli, I, I know you have a, a philosophy on the pricing as well. Uh, you know, so you want to fill them in on that one before I go to my tidbit? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, you know, guys, I think just like y'all seen in the chat today, there's several different size uh, size considerations, chapter considerations, everything like that, um, age considerations even of the chapter um, to take into account. But know that I think any of those, those price ranges is appropriate. But understand that this event shouldn't cost you money and bring a net loss, right? You know, you, you guys have made comments that they've got to get that grad brother dough. We got to be able to, you know, uh, have that kind of pipeline for profit, right? You want to make money off of this event. Um, and that's not to say that you're begging for money, um, but the ticket price should be able to cover costs, whether it's venue, catering, everything of the sort, while also being appropriate, right? You want a lot of grad brothers to be there. If they're hit with a $100, $125, ticket price, not every grad's going to be able to come. The younger grads like myself and Dio, that might not be in the budget, uh, no matter how far in advance you tell us, hey, uh, this is what the ticket price is going to be. Um, so there are different ways around that. One that I've seen some chapters do uh, is, you know, we, we just got done with the Christmas season. Uh, a lot of people still use layaway for breaking up payments for, for their presents. Um, similar thing, uh, some chapters have started like an 1848 club. Uh, where if a graduate donates at least $18.48 every month, uh, their pig dinner ticket for that year is included, no matter whether it's $60 or $100, it's included, uh, because they know that there's a constant stream of donations coming on, uh, you know, coming through the chapter. Chase, I saw you just ask a question, man. I'll come back to it here in a minute um, once I get through this thought. Um, but Again, guys, it really just depends on what, uh, you know, what, what your chapter is looking at, what your chapter needs, and uh, what your graduate base is looking for. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and brothers, I, I think Eli hit the nail on the head. Pricing can affect attendance, right? I've seen pig dinners, uh, you know, that, that cost $25 uh, to a grad brother, and I've seen some that cost $125 for grad brothers. Um, you know your grad brothers, you know what they'd be willing to pay for a good event. Um, you know, so the pricing is, is really up to you all, but you're not supposed to lose money on the event. Now, Chase, just to, to touch on your question, I like the idea of it, but keep in mind how the risk management policy plays into that as well, um, right? So I don't want to go too in-depth into the details, but, uh, you know, ultimately, it, something like that could go against the risk management policy. Right, so just keep that in mind as, as you all plan and coordinate the next pig dinner. Um, now, Reese, if if the chapter isn't allowed to take grad donations, 
you know, I, I'd love to connect you with the Educational Foundation. Uh, you know, it's possible that grads can donate through there for specific scholarships that are for the chapter, uh, you know, or for undergraduate members. That might be one way that the chapter can benefit uh, from that. Um, you know, but again, it depends on what that the, the reasoning is for, for not being able to take donations. Um, you know, but we can, we can discuss that. Uh, you can shoot me a chat and we can discuss that in private. And Chase, go back to your question too, ma'am. Um, you know, as far as having like different packages, I've seen that that's really popular with, with chapters as well, right? Um, where, you know, your ticket price will cover food. Um, it, it may be, uh, you know, again, going into the risk management policy maybe includes a drink ticket. Um, but again, you just got to make sure that you're following the risk management policy with that uh, into consideration. Um, and also maybe some like an extra, so maybe if the chapter order extra shirts or something like that, maybe there's some merch that's tied into a, a like a higher package, uh, different things like that. Sometimes grads like to sit closer to the stage if you have a big enough venue, uh, different, different things of the sort, right? So um, I think that doing a base fee and then adding stuff on top of it into like a package deal definitely isn't a bad idea, but something you just have to make sure that you're conveying that value of going into the higher packages for those graduates. Maybe it could include, uh, you know, tickets for the, the chapter's future graduate event. Um, if they want to go ahead and pay for that up front, hey, we've already got, you know, this many guys reserved and they've got tickets for the, the upcoming golf tournament, something like that, because I know that that's something that I think you guys have done with like the smoker event. Uh, and David, to, to your question, keep in mind that the open bar or the free bar might be against the risk management policy. You know, so as you go into your planning, remember that the risk management policy applies to graduate events as well. Um, I know one cool thing, a, a, a personal example, last year, brothers, uh, everyone thought our pig dinner pricing was, was outrageous and it was $45 for half state, which isn't outrageous by any means, but it included a commemorative whiskey glass. Uh, you know, so every graduate that was in attendance left with a commemorative gift. Um, you know, so that might be a way to, to raise your ticket prices. Um, you know, so keep in mind that there is opportunity, right? Uh, you know, as we move forward. Now, brothers, before I turn the slide over to Eli, it's important to remember that constant communication about the pig dinner is, is key, right, to the promotion of the event. Don't simply rely on your Facebook page. There's a lot of grad builds that don't have Facebook. Uh, you know, so any platform that you use or have, utilize that to promote your upcoming. Yeah, and the last one on that last slide was talking about preparing awards, right, for recognition. Uh, so one month out, you know, we talk about the program being finalized. So from, you know, let's say seven o'clock to nine o'clock, what are we going to be talking about? What's the, who's going to be speaking? What's the MC you got to do? Uh, what are some chapter traditions that we want to throw in there? What are some chapter traditions we want to create if we're a younger chapter? Um, different things like that, uh, making sure that that's getting closer to finalized uh, and being able to get printed out for the day of so that everybody has a copy. Um, so just check in with the venue, make sure that everything's still set, make sure they haven't had anything go on maintenance wise, uh, that that would be a surprise, or maybe they decided to change up decorations, uh, different things of that sort. Um making sure that if you guys are decorating with your own chapter memorabilia uh, and insignia, that you go ahead and collect that so that you can put that appropriately throughout the venue as you wish. Um, reconfirm with the master ceremonies, the date, the details, just so that he's prepared or she's prepared uh, to be able to host that and, uh, you know, prepare accordingly. Um, reconfirm the keynote speaker details. So following up with them, make sure they're not needing any other inspiration or uh, I know some that I've seen really like to dig into the history of the chapter. Uh, make sure that you're giving them all, all kinds of access to that so that they can reference that in their, uh, their speech to make it even stronger impact. Um, finalize chapter awards. And that actually leads me to the next poll uh, for those that haven't done it. So does your chapter give out awards at pig dinner? Um, you know, that's something that not every chapter necessarily does, but I'd like to, Dio and I are kind of curious to see who does and who doesn't. Uh, again, nothing against you if you don't, because some chapters have a separate night dedicated to awards. Maybe later on in the year, maybe big dinners in the fall, we want to save awards for the spring. It's totally fine. So you guys just call. So let's see what the poll's looking like. And again, not everybody does, and that's A-OK. -okay. Like a 76, 75, 25 result right now. Um, 
and growing as I talk. Uh, but again, guys, so it seems like a lot of you do, but for those that don't, it might be something to consider if you've never done it before. Maybe those are younger chapters in there, um, you know, that you can you know, take a, take some hints from the chat uh, and be able to create that potentially and have that kind of uh, tradition moving forward. Uh, I guess to build off of that, it leads me to another poll right up under that. So what awards did your chapter give out? Um, you know, this is a, a, a three, three, three answer uh, question, uh, undergraduate, graduate, or both. Um, so you know, we, we just kind of want to see what kinds of awards does your chapter give out if they do. So for that 77% that does, kind of want to see where, uh, where you fall here. And again, a pretty good mix. So 35% undergraduate, 11% graduate, and 53% do both. Uh, and that's uh, okay if you're dedicating one or the other. Uh, but one thing that we want to make sure that you're aware of is that, much like to Dio's point earlier, for that graduate that didn't get, uh, you know, that, that uh, I want to say, hard copy of the invitation, right? Uh, if graduates are coming and it's just undergraduate, undergraduates getting recognized, you know, that may be in part something to do with graduate attendance. Uh, they're not really feeling like they're getting valued if they're not getting some kind of award. And I'm not saying every graduate needs an award. There's no participation trophies for, for Fiji experience, but uh, it, it's, it, it's definitely something to consider, right? Um, to try to get more graduates there. You know, we don't do this for, you know, uh, for, for our own self gain, uh, but it, it'd be kind of cool if you're sitting there as a graduate 30, 30 years removed and chapter recognize you for maybe a donation you made or something like that. So definitely something to consider. Um, moving forward a little bit, the other two weeks, uh, making sure that you're getting everything to the NC so that they can, again, continue their preparations. Um, get the speaker a gift. If, again, you've, you're getting a speaker, make sure it's something applicable to the time that they put in and the effort that they put in. Uh, one week before, uh, making sure that you're getting that final headcount to the caterer once you've gotten RSVPs and cancellations, things like that. Uh, prepare name tags. Those always help. Um, so whether it's the, hey, hello, my name is, or if you go a little bit more professional and get everybody's uh, printed and everything like that um, with their pledge class years. Um, and then the day before, of course, uh, these are just some last minute, last minute things. Um, Make sure that you're confirming the alcohol and bar policy um, with the caterer or whoever is hosting at the at the venue. So yeah, I'll let you take this next one. Perfect. So, brothers, uh, the day of, it's important to check your, your AV equipment first. Make sure you know brothers can hear you uh, and all your attendees can hear you. Um, you know, if you can place programs, make it. You know, make, make it a formal event. You know, and most formal events, the place settings are in place. You know, they look nice. They have a program there. Uh, if any of you guys have ever attended the academy in person, that's exactly how the, the dinners, um, you know, and the lunches are, are prepared, you know, with the program uh, for the speaker in place. The registration um, confirmation needs to happen the day of. Make sure all the awards are there. Chapter memorabilia is there, uh, you know, and displayed properly. And ultimately, goes if you guys are, are planning, uh, I would suggest if you have a keynote speaker, have a gift for them as well. Um, you know, it serves as a thank you from the chapter. Uh, you know, so it, at the end of the day, for if it's something that you all want to do, I think it'd be a nice gesture uh, to go to go a long way. But now looking at it, both there is follow up after pig dinner as well. You know, and I think this is where a lot of chapters. Uh, kind of let it be, right, after the event is over. Uh, you know, so one to two weeks after, I encourage you all to send thank you notes for all the graduate brothers that, that attended. Uh, you know, speakers, any VIPs, anyone that was in attendance should get a thank you uh, note of some sort, whether that's hard copy or an email. Make sure you get feedback from your attendees. Uh, you know, brothers, that there might be parts of the pig dinner that graduates didn't like. You know, older grads might have a different depiction of what pig dinner is. Um, you know, it might be different than the type of event that you're hosting, if that makes sense, right? Uh, you know, so feedback is important. Maybe they just hated the food, <laughs> you know, but, but it's important to get that so you guys can make changes to make it better next year. Um, hold a debriefing meeting, uh, you know, with, with your committee, uh, 
you know, brothers, I, I think that's one of the most important ones, you know, do kind of a, a SWOT analysis of it, you know, what, what went well, what didn't, you know, what can we improve for next year? You know, I encourage you all to, to increase, uh, not increase, to report your attendance to headquarters as well. You know, we'd like to log that simply to know, you know, what that looks like. Uh, you know, we're developing new metrics for pig dinner. So, so we can use that information, you know, to really provide more resources and support the chapters that may need it. So, you know, if you all can report those, it'd be very helpful. But lastly, if you all have a photographer at the event, um, you know, obviously this isn't recap, but this is just kind of the day of the event. Make sure he takes pictures, brothers. Uh, you know, what better way to showcase your event, uh, you know, than, than with professionally done pictures. Uh, if you have a brother who's a photographer in the chapter, it might be a good opportunity for him to build his portfolio. Uh, you know, it's kind of help me help you type of situation. Um, you know, so the, the timeline, brothers, again, this is available as a resource for you, uh, you know, and by no means that Eli and I cover every single bullet point and there's a lot more in that resource. So, you know, take the time to read it as, it, as you start planning out your next pick. Right. And I just want to kind of give a shout out to Michael in the chat. If you're not watching both Dio and I in the chat at the same time, uh, Michael talked about if you're asking for money, uh, which, you know, again, we've kind of talked about a little bit, making sure that you tell the graduates the goal that you guys are wanting to do with it, rather than just blindly asking, making sure that you have some kind of ideas like, hey, we want to do a renovation to the house. Uh, we want to add a study area. Uh, hey, we're actually you know wanting to um, fundraise for this brother's family because his mom and dad both have come down with something uh, that's bringing a financial burden on the family. Something like that will really help motivate them and help them see the purpose of why they're needing to donate uh, even more. So, um, Michael, I, I, you know, again, still a line right out of our book uh, in trying to make sure that the graduates understand where you guys are coming from. Um, but just going into pig dinner some more, uh, you know, one thing that brings a lot of graduates and kind of builds that attendance is uh, that recognition, like we talked about earlier. Um, so one thing is recognition owls. Uh, so these are awards given to brothers uh, at three different levels. The silver owl is given for brothers 25 years after they initiate as a brother. Uh, the gold owl is 50 years after you initiate. And then the diamond owl is 75 years after you initiate. Um, so if your chapter doesn't give any kind of graduate awards already, this is one that you don't even have to think of. You don't have to think of, you know, best graduate brother. You just have to think of these three classes, right? Every year, it just moves up a year um, to where, uh, you know, you're making sure that you're reaching out to these brothers, welcoming them back to, to big dinner and understanding that you are going to get this award for making it, uh, you know, this far in your life post, uh, post Fiji. Um, another thing too, uh, why get graduate brothers involved in planning? Brothers, this is a, a, again, an event that is for graduates. So why not get them involved and really seek their feedback? I know Dio kind of mentioned this earlier, uh, but grads are going to be coming back to see other grads. So uh, they have an idea of what they're looking out for in some kind of an event. Um, and it even allows for better connections and networking for undergraduates because graduates that are already involved in the business community uh, or whatever community they are involved with um, are able to even provide better feedback for those undergraduates and give them potentially some suggestions or connections uh, to help them move forward in their own careers. Uh, and again, just harping on what Dia was saying earlier about the importance of feedback, uh, reaching out to those brothers afterwards and getting that uh, can only make the event better moving forward. Um, you know, you're going to keep growing in numbers if the, the event gets better every year, gets, uh, you know, gets more meaningful for the graduates and the undergrads to have a better experience. Absolutely. And, and real quick, before we go to the next slide, Drew, I, I just want to touch on, on your question. Um, ooh. Long answer, short, no. Uh, you know, headquarters doesn't necessarily have a fund to help out with that. However, there has been a, a new entity created, 1848 Housing, that can help offer um, support, you know, and advice to your house corporation, you know, to help better their operations and ultimately learn how to better support you all. Uh, if you're not in a safe living environment, I mean, at the end of the day, brothers, you need to be, right? Uh, you know, so there are resources on the housing page uh, on the FIGAM website. Um, you know, specifically to some of our preferred partners for fundraising, who is a brother from Vermont, Mark Wilkinson, he's incredible, uh, you know, and he'd be able to provide and create a plan for you all in your house corporation as to how to try to get more donations from your grads. So I suggest just trying to look at those resources first, 
feel free to shoot me an email, you know, and I can connect you with them. So brothers, how do we adapt to pink dinner virtually? Um, I know a lot of you guys were, were kind of asking that, you know, in, in the first uh, session, in the first track. So, you know, well, brothers, it's really eliminating some of the, I don't necessarily want to say the traditions, but you eliminate a lot of the excess um, stuff that, that's part of pig dinner, you know. But at the end of the day, it allows an opportunity to um, new opportunities. For one, you don't necessarily need to follow the risk management policy because it is virtual, right? If, if a brother wants to sit at home and drink a beer during the event, great. I think that that's awesome. Um, you know, but it's also an opportunity to engage some of those lost grants, uh, you know, invite them back. Brothers who might be scared of travel, you know, currently and don't want to, don't want the risk, um, or they might be high risk and, and just don't want to go through that. Brothers, a virtual pig dinner allows them the opportunity to still remain engaged. Um, virtual events don't mean no risk management policy. I, I do want to clarify that real quick, uh, but keep in mind that, you know, they, they do, they do apply. You know, if you all are still gathering, um, you know, as a brotherhood and just having a video, the risk management policy still applies, but there's opportunity. For example, grads aren't supposed to be drinking during the, the actual pig dinner or during the speeches is, is one of the bullets in the risk management policy. Well, they can't, right, virtually. So it, it just allows adaptations of the risk management policy, not necessarily eliminating it completely. Um, you know, so, so brothers, it, it's an opportunity to re-engage grads and give them an opportunity, give them the, the opportunity to, to really join from anywhere, uh, you know, whether they really want to or not. Um, you know, I know this last year when, when my chapter hosted a virtual pig dinner, we had grads that haven't been back in person in four years. Uh, you know, so they, they, as long as they have the date in their calendar and the time there, most brothers will go out of the way, uh, you know, to make it happen. Now, the importance of pre-recording brothers, I, I think we've all seen, uh, you know, connectivity issues, <laughs> to, to say the least, on Zoom, you know, in the last almost, you know, nine, ten months now, um, you know, so a lot of that pre-recording can help avoid some of those mishaps. Uh, you know, so I know uh, a lot of chapters pre-record some of the traditions, the exiles toast, the keynote speech in some cases, um, you know, and all you have to do is really insert that clip into, into your virtual pig dinner. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, oops. So, so brothers, you know, if you do want some, some ideas on how to adapt your pig dinner to a virtual platform, there is another resource in that files tab that's specific to these virtual events. Or you can shoot me an email. You know, I'm, I'm happy to um, talk talk this with you, talk through this with you, you know, and help you create a plan of action, you know, to, to adapt your plan. Sorry, Dio, keep throwing your, uh, throwing your email in the chat. Everybody's asking for it. Popular guy today. Um, guys, the next next part we're going to be talking about uh, in the Corsac role, getting away from pig dinner, uh, is just talking about external support. So not only individuals, but other organizations. Um, so, you know, the, the purpose of outreach outside of Graduate Brothers is much like we talked about earlier, trying to build that influence, not only on your campus, but in your local community, trying to make sure that, you know, we we really do live that value of friendship, right? Trying to make sure that anybody that comes into contact with us understands who we are as an organization and as individuals. Um, but again, faculty, parents, staff, community industry leaders, everybody like that. Everybody is, I'm gonna say a target here. Everybody's in the target market, right? Um, COVID has definitely thrown a wrench in a lot of people's gears, but it's also an opportunity for future engagement and partnership. Don't want you guys to see it as a, a present hindrance uh, when it can be a future opportunity down the line. So just reaching out to different organizations and saying, hey, when, when the world returns to normal, um, we'd love to do this kind of an event with you and just start that planning early if you already see a potential community partner that you'd like to work with. And again, this just this picture, just to highlight it, is just a, a philanthropy with another organization. Um, so it's the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Some chapters on your campuses and the campuses that I've been able to visit um, are often partnering with other fraternities and sororities, maybe an active student group. Um, and a lot of the times this builds that influence even more. So don't be trying to exclude uh, those externalities, uh, those external groups because they could definitely help out a lot. 
that actually Absolutely. leads to yeah, are you good to you? That that actually leads us to like the next what next poll. I'm not going to go through, but if you haven't already, uh, just kind of want to see does your chapter engage graduates outside of brothers? Is the next poll question? Do you go for it? Perfect. So, Rose, as you all are answering that that poll question, we'll just jump to what some of those external individuals look like outside of grad brothers. Um, you know, and a lot of these might be overlooked in, in some cases, right? So, we just want to give you kind of a, a clear list as to what those could include. Parents are one of the biggest ones. If your chapter isn't communicating with parents, um, I highly suggest that you do. Uh, you know, a, a lot of a lot of parents just like to know what the organization their son is a part of is doing, right? And, and the reputation that they have. So that can always help build relationships. Faculty advisors, scholarship or academic advisors, the FSA staff, uh, you know, the Greek advisor and graduate assistants, tutoring and academic center, counseling center, professors, basically anyone within the university, if you think of it that way, right? Like Eli alluded to in the beginning of the presentation, anyone with a degree that's not a graduate brother is, can fit into this, right? So industry professionals are also in there. Uh, you know, if there's an influential um, individual in your community that, that you all want to build a partnership with, you know, it's, it's a perfect opportunity. And for the chapters that do have houses, don't forget your house mom or your house parents. Um, you know, they, they can be a tremendous resource for you as well. Eli, do we have those results? We do, we do. So just looking at them real quick. Let's see. So people didn't know this was a thing. And guys, that's totally fine. That's why we're doing this. You know, you just jumped into this role. So don't be discouraged if you, you pick that as your option. I'm glad that you guys owned up to it. Um, you know, keep these keep this list in mind. Um, whenever you're planning out that PR plan that we mentioned earlier too, uh, try to be more engaging with these. But again, over half of the group already is engaging with these individuals. So that's awesome to see. I guess on the flip side, if we go to the next slide, we're talking about external organizations, right? So again, the next poll is uh, talking about other campus and community organizations. So you guys can go ahead and uh, vote on that one too. So we can kind of see that as I go through and talk a little bit about how um, what the, again, the difference between these organizations, right? Like I mentioned earlier, we get Greek councils, of course. So trying to make sure that you're showing love to all of them. So not just IFC and the Panhellenic Council, you know, try to reach out to those MPHC groups, the, uh, the, the multicultural Greek council, if you have those on your campus. Um, a lot of times these groups don't feel the love from IFC. So if I am adults is the first one that reaches out to them, you know, in a, in a year or two, they're going to really be able to, I think, bring something else to the table uh, that you may not see from other groups. Um, honorary Greek organizations, so different, uh, different areas of study have different uh, organizations like that. So the engineering group, business group, psychology group, uh, pre-med, uh, AED folks out there. Uh, I know that there was a, a, a pre-med discussion group started on the, the forums on here. Um, SGA, student government, advocate clubs. Uh, so trying to make sure that you're reaching out to all these different groups that are on your campus, um, not only because it'll help, uh, again, build your influence, but that could also lead to recruitment help as well. Um, but looking off campus, um, you know, we have those philanthropic organizations, the service-based organizations, church groups, graduate chapters, if they're, if you're in one of those metro areas, or not even just metro areas, but one of those areas that has an active graduate chapter, uh, and even graduate-owned businesses. A lot of these, like, external groups don't see the love sometimes um, just because we're so focused on the on-campus part, right? So trying to shift your focus to off-campus sometimes, too. Um, not to, again, toot Alberta's horn here again, but... Uh, they, with their virtual pig dinner, actually reached out to a graduate brother that owned a restaurant in the area. And instead of everybody just eating whatever food they like had in front of them, they actually had the option for brothers to be able to purchase uh, a dinner from this restaurant in Edmonton because a lot of the brothers were still in the area. And so the undergraduates actually facilitated the delivery of the dinners to the graduate brothers. And again, everybody was able to eat the same meal at the same time. And I thought that was a really unique experience with COVID. Um, so um, just going to the poll real quick, though, 88% uh, of the chapter or the chapters in here are uh, reaching out to external organizations. For those that aren't, guys, you know, you, you see some examples. Uh, so hopefully that helps out whenever you're crafting that PR plan again. And I think it's important to note, Eli, you know, brothers, the worst they can say is no, right? 
you know, reaching out to these businesses. At the end of the day, you can get, you can start creating that partnership. You can get donations for your event, right? Most businesses want the exposure. If you all make t-shirts for your event, all you have to do is throw their logo on the back, right? And create different tiers of sponsorship. It's, it's an easy way to raise money, um, you know, through the community partners that you can create. So brothers, the, it's easy for us to get caught up in this mindset of, uh, you know, Fiji only, right? And, and I don't blame you. You know, I think we all bleed purple at the end of the day. Uh, you know, but brothers, now more than ever, interfraternalism is important, especially on your campus. Um, you know, the, the importance of connectedness, especially in, in the time of, of COVID, you know, as you all have seen, it causes distress, you know, for a lot of people. You know, so it's important to understand that all organizations on your campus are in this. We're all going through this together, right? Sure, some groups might have done better in recruitment. But, you know, brothers, I, I feel like a lot of groups might also be willing to share why they were so successful in recruitment if you ask them, right? Um, you know, it helps with that idea sharing. It helps bring, bring forward that message of we're all in this together. A lot of you guys, your chapter might have even gone through this, but there is a movement. Um, early, probably in the first few months of COVID, this abolished Greek life movement that came about. I uh, you know, and, and brothers, uh, luckily, none of our chapters were truly affected by it, but a lot of organizations have really shut themselves down and, and local chapters have shut themselves down for that sole reason of, you know, exposing the truth about Greek life. Um, you know, but brothers, I think the unity uh, amongst interfraternal organizations now is, is more important than ever. Uh, you know, strong bonds equal a strong community. And if you guys can showcase that on your campus, I think it'll make leaps and strides in terms of policy, but also movement within the university. There it is, unmuted now. Uh, next part is just talking about communication. Uh, so, of course, transparency is key, not just when you're talking about internal communication. As corresponding secretary, you are the external communicator, making sure that any message that goes out is at least seen by you and potentially the president, too, uh, because he's the one that's going to get, uh, you know, the messages and the emails uh, if it's uh, not exactly agreeing with our values as an organization, right? Um, but again, not only with graduate brothers, you want to be transparent with your, your campus community uh, so that everybody understands what you've got going on as an organization. Also helps you build rapport um, because, you know, other organizations are going to want to work with you if they understand what you're going for as an organization. Um, so different ways of communicating as a chapter. Uh, of course, you know, we've, we've talked about newsletters. We've talked about social media. We've talked about all these different channels. And we'll get into that in a little bit uh, as well. Um, but it even comes as that, you know, just general setting up a table on the green or on the quad, whatever you have on your campus uh, to allow people to see you as an organization, as a chapter. Um, and then, of course, mediums of communication kind of go hand in hand uh, with kind of what I was talking about there. Um, of course, not forgetting, uh, not forgetting mediums, uh, you know, making sure that something as simple as like a thank you letter or a follow up email, all of that are all of those different things are examples of that communication that come from the chapter. Um, so guys, just one quick, one more poll there. Uh, how many different mediums of communication to use interact with your graduate brothers? Um, yep, cool. And that's all we've got for this slide. I'll post those results here in just a little bit. Perfect, now, now brothers, we're gonna show you an example of why communication matters, uh, you know, especially to graduate brothers. This is a real life example of, of a postcard that we received from the Phi Gamma Delta magazine. Uh, the executive director, Rob Caudill, was actually the one that opened this and shared this with me. And I thought it was perfect, uh, you know, for, for our presentation. It's hard to read, so I'll just read it to you. But this is from a graduate brother. I'm not going to share the chapter, um, you know, but ultimately, brothers, it reads, Rob, what inspires me to not support Phi Gamma Delta is that our chapters, undergraduate members, don't give a damn about the graduates. We have a group of graduates which meets the first Tuesday of every month for lunch. Three Purple Legionnaires, many chapter officers, and devoted Phi Gams are in our group. When the undergraduate chapter, when the undergraduates trashed the chapter house, we paid to have it refurbished. We got one week's notice of the last pig dinner. We treated the graduates with great respect. Obviously, something has changed in the chapter, you know, and, and the culture has changed for them. But brothers, I think this, this is a first-hand example 
of you know why communication is important, early planning and transparency is important. Your graduates care. It, it might seem like they don't, but brothers, they care more than most people. Um, they want a chapter to come back to you at the end of the day. So keep that in mind as, as you develop your PR plans and communicate with your grads. Of course, this slide is just telling you who all can help you. Right. Trying to make sure that you, you know that you're not in this fight alone. Um, so, of course, these are all the graduates that we have uh, in the fraternity. So for your Purple Legionnaire, the Board of Chapter Advisors, if you have one set up with your chapter, the House Corporation, for those that have those uh, with, you know, house chapters, um, me, a, a field secretary. But each one of you has your own field secretary, depending on your region. Uh, if you haven't met them, you will meet them very soon, I promise. Uh, and of course, Dio as a director of graduate and en en graduate engagement. Uh, all these brothers are here to see you succeed in this role. We don't want to feel ever, you want you to ever feel like you're high and dry uh, in anything that you're trying to do. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help because we're not always going to be asking you how we can help uh, because we, we do deal with a lot of brothers that are already asking for help. So. Absolutely. Now, brothers, we're, we're going to touch on social media and PR for, for the rest of the, the presentation. So, brothers, first off, what is your role with, uh, with social media? Some of you guys oversee it, right? You oversee all your accounts. Some have a social media chairman that oversees the accounts and the posts. But ultimately, you know, you got to think of with being the external engagement person on, on your cabinet, it's your role to portray the correct and, and positive image of your chapter. Right. So, you know, what is PR? That's the way we relate to the greater community and how we showcase ourselves to that community. You know, so your social media outlets, brothers, play hand, play a, a huge part in uh, in your PR, um, you know, not only on campus, but in your in your community. So if you follow some of those organizations in your community, they might be seeing the type of. Uh, type of culture that, that you're displaying through social media, right? So keep that in mind as well. So how do we engage graduates? Well, brothers, I mean, we, we've talked about the, the various examples, right? Newsletters, uh, social media, Facebook pages, group meets, uh, you know, have, have been some that have been thrown in the chat, you know, but keep in mind that if you rely on one, you're also excluding some graduates that might be a part of others, or that might not be they might not have social media at the end of the day, right? And, and I can think of multiple examples um, from grad brothers I've met all across the US that, that just don't have social media and don't hear from the chapter because of that. So, you know, brothers, we're gonna touch specifically on the newsletter for a second. Um, so why do we have it? Brothers, well, it's a full semester of, it's a full semester's recap for the graduates, right? Um, you know, a lot of the brothers love seeing a hard copy. So if you have it in your budget, I suggest that you, that you try to um, do a hard copy uh, newsletter, you know, to highlight all the positives. Some of those positives might include, uh, you know, what's in the next slide, and, and I'll rely on Eli to to share um, share some of those examples. And Jack, that that's a great point. Mailchimp is easy. If you all want to utilize Mailchimp, I'm pretty sure it's free at the end of the day. Um, you know, so why not? Right. And brothers, there are two more polls for you to do. We just want to see, you know, does your chapter have a PR chairman or are you the guy that's doing it all? Uh, we kind of want, just wanted to see that. Um, another one, when we're talking about the newsletter, has your chapter sent out a newsletter this academic year? So think back to the fall, even when you weren't over it. Do you remember seeing a newsletter? Uh, if not, let us know. Um, these are some things to, to keep in mind, though. i um, not going to go through every single bullet here, hit some of my favorite highlights. Uh, important dates, that's kind of uh, a key to have on there, right? Uh, so different things uh, to keep in mind. I just said, a big one is that second bullet, talking about athletics. I know a lot of brothers like coming back to see games if they're in the area. Homecoming's huge. Um, but if you oftentimes plan a big dinner in the fall, especially where I'm coming from and Dio's coming from, from down south, if you plan a big dinner around a big football game, there are going to be a lot of graduate brothers that are already planning on being there that weekend. Uh, adding that into a schedule of events for a weekend builds that attendance even more and kind of becomes that tradition, right? Uh, like I know that, uh, you know, there, there are chapters at, uh, was it Washington and Washington State, the Apple Cup? Am I mixing that up, Dio? Right? Um, they'll, they'll, they'll 
sometimes they'll plan that around that same weekend uh, to where those graduates can attend and get to see some good football. Another one is, like we were saying earlier, trying to make sure that there are uh, there's a section in there for area graduates, so not just those that come from the chapter. Like, hey, this is an open invitation uh, for any graduate in the area. Uh, we got your email address. Here you go. Here's our, our newsletter. Uh, and another one is uh, making sure that you are highlighting donations. So whether that is a donor list or any major donations that are made to the chapter, uh, that you're highlighting those brothers and really being able to show them thanks for their contrib contribution, um, because that can really go a, a long way in securing future donations. Absolutely. So brothers, it, you see why the newsletter is so important, right? Um, you know, and... At the end of the day, it could be the difference maker whether the chapter gets donations too, right? Uh, you know, if, if you have a, a blurb in there about how brothers can donate, you might you might be uh, seeing a good return on your investment with time. But Eli, I, I'm not sure if you covered the we get the poll results for those. Yeah, I can pull them up real quick. In one second. So there's just a couple of brothers that are asking why is a PR chair needed? You know, guys, again, this is just depending on the size of the chapter, right? Uh, it's not necessarily needed for everybody, but it could help take something off of your plate potentially uh, and help you focus on other things as a course act. Um, but again, the rest of the rest of the group here is kind of split. Some have a PR chairman, some don't. And again, I think both are, both are okay. Uh, going into the academic year, um, academic year question, uh, a lot have, some haven't and some haven't in a while. Uh, so again, guys, hopefully this is kind of giving you some ideas. If you are falling into that, you know, that half that haven't sent one or haven't sent it in a while um, to kind of spruce it up whenever you bring it back. It could be as easy as a MailChimp email, or, you know, if you're wanting to go out and create a full document, maybe you have some hard copies sent out. Um, all of that with, with Dio's help as far as getting addresses for brothers um, can be, again, a really successful process. And brothers, I, I'm, I'm loving what's happening in the chat right now. I, you know, uh, Daniel has has an example of, of his chapter's pig dinner or not pig dinner, newsletter template, you know, and, and everyone's uh, asking to, to get a copy of it. I think that's awesome. Uh, you know, and the more you all can help each other, ultimately, the more it can strengthen our, our external communications, you know, as, as chapters. So, brothers, we're going to touch on some social media examples. I uh, We'll go through these pretty quickly, but I will prompt that these are outdated. Uh, so if you go on their current social media pages, you probably won't see these posts unless you scroll down quite a bit. Uh, so the first one's going to be Western Michigan. Um, Western Michigan has, you know, a very simple biography at the very top. And again, brothers, this might have changed, uh, you know, so this was a snapshot from, from when I had put, uh, put these slides together during last Academy, uh, you know, very simple biography and a link to their current chapter t-shirt sale. Right off the bat, they have a variety of pictures, you know, kind of encompasses the, the culture of the chapter right off the bat. Um, but they also have, they've utilized their social media accounts for philanthropic reasons. You know, this is, I'm guessing some sort of sorority challenge. Uh, you know, whoever gets the most likes, um, you know, wins something. And I'm not sure whether this was Sweetheart promotion. I don't know whether this was, uh, you know, just money donated to their cause, but ultimately, brothers, social media is an easy way uh, to, to gain traction for your philanthropy. And so again, brothers, going into another example from Mississippi State, um, you know, this chapter had a different approach whenever Dio took these screenshots. Uh, they didn't have like a social media competition or anything like that. They had more highlights from the, whether, from the brothers, whether it was a graduate or undergraduate. Uh, you could see, you know, different things like the gatherings at football games. They initiated a new pledge class, everything like that. Even highlighting a campus event, the Greek Night of Worship. Um, so again, try to make sure that, uh, you know, you're trying to engage those graduate brothers, bring, bring highlights of their, uh, their interactions uh, is also really important so that, you know, a potential recruit can look at this and say, oh, this really isn't for college days alone. Like this is for something that I can, you know, really see myself being a part of for the rest of my life. And these guys are here. Yeah, I mean, you can see brothers getting engaged, um, brothers 
there's like what three three out of these 12 uh brothers getting engaged mississippi state has a lot of sweethearts apparently um so you know different you, your chapter uh has different things that it'll, it'll probably want to highlight right so um something to something to check out and really be able to consider your uh your chapter's perspective suppose lastly before we close out we want to leave you all kind of with resources and an acronym to build your own pr plan um again the the focus of pr is kind of the the external image you portray the, the chapters right so you know it's important for you all if you haven't developed a pr plan as a chapter um you know to to really sit down with your cabinet and and if you have a pr chairman sit down with him and develop one of these plans we've used the acronym of, of value uh, just to make it easier right well we have values so quite that that's kind of it goes hand in hand so brothers these are based off of the the five values that we have friendship knowledge service morality and excellence so you know the first one when looking at value which one are you going to be promoting out of those five a, for the agenda, create a timeline that's associated with the project. Um, you know, when are the dates decided? When are they announced? When are we promoting? L is location, place. So where, where are we going to promote this? For utilization, how do we promote? What platforms and how are we going to do it? And how are we promoting? And lastly, engagement. Who are we targeting and how? Who are we inviting? Um, you know, it, it's focused on, on the who right? So some tips, brothers. One, determine what the goal is, uh, you know, for, for your PR plan um, and for your chapter concerning PR. Know your audience. You know, if you're targeting different audience, you're going to have to have a different message. Parents are going to look different than potential new members, right? Um, three, give the audience objectives. You know, so think of the end results, not the process. Um, so what, what objectives and results do you think are actually possible? Number four, consider a strategy. How will you approach the challenge of working towards your goal? Methods of communication. Um, you know, what are the messages and activities gonna look like related to that goal? Five, identify tactics for your strategy. How will you use your resources around you to carry out your strategy? Six, plan activities. Specific activities are required, um, may be required to carry out certain strategies, right? Same with communication methods. Seven, receive evaluation. Consider public opinions and feedback, right? Whether that's graduate brothers, uh, whether that's um, parents, whether that's university admin, get feedback. And lastly, brothers, develop a timeline associated with the tasks. Uh, you know, that way, as corresponding secretary, you can have check-ins with the chairman. You can have kind of updates on the timeline itself as you progress. You can have reports to give to your cabinet. Brothers, you know, as we close out, we want to leave you with some resources. Most, if not all of these, are in the files tab, um, you know, located on the platform itself. Um, Eli, if, if you want to touch on what some of those might be, I'll find the actual link to the website and throw that in our chat as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, guys, the first one is talking about all the relations resources that can be found on FIGAM.org's website. So if something happens to your Pathable app, you can never access it again after this. You really want to get uh, get some of these great resources that Dio's been working on. It's all on the website. Um, so if you need help navigating that, my email will be at the end of this as well. Um, shoot me an email. We can, uh, we can help you figure that out. Um, the I was going to say there was one more on there. Yeah, the graduate communication services. These are actually some individuals at IHQ that specialize in creating things like invites, getting uh, different photos compiled, everything like that, um, to make sure that you guys have the best, uh, you know, the best items available. Um, I mean, they do come at a cost, but again, they help you design them, send them, and everything of the sort. So if you're needing to take that off your plate and have the room in your budget for it, that could be something to take advantage of as well. And yeah, I mean, again, I think we've kind of touched on the rest of these crowd changes more for philanthropies. Um, all that can be found on the website. Big dinner resources kind of fall into the first basket there. Uh, the virtual big dinner and events guide, if you're needing help planning that, also on the website. Uh, and then requesting a list of graduate brothers, like Dio's talked about several times today. Um, that's just an email to him. Uh, so guys, take advantage of these resources. We don't want to be sitting on our hands. Uh, 
waiting for something to do. We want you guys to be, uh, you know, be your own advocate here. Absolutely. And for this, uh, I think we're, we're probably nearing the, the very end of our presentation. So, you know, I just want to thank you all you know, for taking the time to, to join us. I hope you all were able to, to have some takeaways from the presentation itself. Um, if you all have any questions, I'm going to also throw the email in the chat one more time uh, for both myself and Eli. Feel free to ask us any questions. Um, we're here to help you at the end of the day, brothers. So anything we can do to help make your job easier and uh, you know, help with this transition into your, your new role, that's what we're here for. Um, so brothers, take the time to keep sharing ideas you know, between everyone in attendance. At the end of the day, we're, we're all in this together, right? You're all corresponding secretaries. So uh, again, thank you all, brothers. You know, if you all have any questions, feel free to either chat us um, you know, through the platform or feel free to shoot us an email. We're here to help. Absolutely, brothers. Appreciate your time. Um, you know, appreciate your attention. Thanks for keeping the chat civil. That means a lot to us. Um, we really enjoyed y'all's engagement today. Um, and, you know, best of luck with this year. Looking forward to seeing what ideas are shared in the group. Me. And, uh, yeah, we're always here for you guys. Thanks, brothers. Perfect. Thank you, brothers.